How do I find incredible wildlife to photograph? A question I probably get asked the most, but unfortunately it's the hardest to answer. Though over the years I have found a few things that always seem to help. Good day dear people! Welcome Abby to the, to the channel. Uh, oh no, no, at this point the Q&A's been out and you're in the Q&A. Oh, so, um, so you, you, everyone knows, everyone knows, Abby. Oh. They, that was yesterday. It's was it yesterday? Back. It was yesterday. It was yesterday. Yeah. So it's hard to keep track of sometimes. Anyway, today we are racing the sun on a sunny Sunday afternoon. I've come straight from work. I'm exhausted. We've only got a couple of hours. But the question is, why? And the answer lies in a random walk I went on with a couple of friends of mine that happened to be visiting about an hour south of here three weeks ago. Number one, spend time out and about whenever possible. As I'm not originally from Bristol, it's always nice when old friends and family pop by or happen to be in the area. Luckily, some of those friends, such as Adam, Sarah, and their eight month old German Shepherd Pippa, are more than happy to spend time out and about when they do. So, as I'm walking through and getting little bits of footage here and there, I think we're fast discovering that Pippa, <laughs> Adam and Sarah's dog, very much going to be the star of today's show. <laughs> but as a lot of you may be thinking, large and very energetic dogs don't really mix well with wildlife photography. <laughs> I think it's often forgotten that there's a lot that goes into taking a photo of a wild animal long before the moment you sit quietly in the woods waiting patiently for signs of movement. And some of those things can be just as important and enjoyable. Yeah, let's go that way. It's got nothing. Whoa, oh, fast! Believe it or not, a long dog walk with friends is a prime example of that. Uh oh, flying dog, flying dog, <laughs> flying dog. <laughs> so, often I get asked how I find wildlife, and nine times out of ten, it's just going on little adventures like this with mates and going on paths that aren't necessarily on the map and just seeing where they lead and keeping your eyes open. I'm not sure we'll find too much in terms of actual wildlife with the energy <laughs> Pip, Taryn up in front, but macro wise and looking for signs in general, could find all sorts really. Oh, Thanks to this largely unplanned exploration, we found a few interesting habitats and even a potential camera trap location. Not to mention a spot that I'll be keeping in mind for the future because although it didn't really yield any results that day, it looks very promising for macro photography in the spring. It has a great varied topography, plenty of light, it's well sheltered by the surrounding wood, and most importantly, it has a water source. Did you realize that the first time I probably tried macro photography was with you? It yeah, it was one of the first proper photography experiences I ever had. Is that a place called Wakehurst Place? Yeah? Do you remember that? Yeah. And we were like taking photos of the stream and there was a dragonfly and we just wandered around. Yeah, I used that for my photography project for GCSE, that dragonfly. So after a long walk in nature, I was pretty chuffed with the amount we discovered and that we'd even managed to soak up some rare British sunshine. As a result, we thought we'd finish the mini adventure at the most British of all places, the pub. <laughs> So, we're sat having a post-walk lunch and drink, and it's, it's all very pleasant. We keep hearing a very strange call. We can't figure out what it is. I've never heard it. How would you describe it without making the noise? <laughs> Notice how I added the without making the noise in the end. <laughs> Touch me. Pretty good, to be fair. Yeah, I'm not bad. I can work on it, I can work on it. Number two, get a reputation as a wildlife nerd amongst your friends and family. Try your best to offer out your services as someone who can solve any wildlife mysteries or settle debates. You will find you get a lot of optimistic questions asking if they've seen something like the last remaining dodo, but occasionally you will find something exciting or that you find equally perplexing, which is usually a very promising sign and can hopefully lead to finding something great to photograph. Is that your attempt at doing the bird? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, after that, I didn't really think much of it. Just a strange bird call that I was quite interested in, but Adam and Sarah just got engaged. So we had other things to talk about, more urgent priorities to focus on. <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, but fast forward three weeks, 
And my friend, who's doing a lot of walking at the moment, Charlie, oh, who has been on the channel, photographing mice in his garden, sends me a recording. And that was almost exactly the sound that I heard three weeks prior. And it wasn't until hearing it through Charlie's phone that I realized what it could potentially be. And so he told me exactly where it was. And 24 hours later, me and Abs are here to see if we can capture the mystery bird, which could potentially be something very exciting on camera. He said there was a really, I'm just gonna sound stupid. He said there was a really big tree. They're all pretty big, <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> Do you have any theories, by the way, as to what it could be? No, I, to be fair, I kind of agree with what you said because I listened to like a turtle dove call. Sounds it really sounds similar, doesn't it? Really similar. Which would be incredible. I haven't actually said that's what I think it is up until this point I'm because. Sorry. <laughs> well, no, just because I've been wrong in the past on this channel. Um, whatever it is, <laughs> it's something. Out what I said. <laughs> whatever it is, it's something I haven't seen before. But that is currently my best guess. Looking back in hindsight at this video, we may be laughing, but yeah, I do agree it's, at it's this actually stage. actually a pigeon, and we're like, oh. <laughs> Look, it's been like that before, let's not... <laughs> oh, wait, hang on. That's a big tree. That is a very big tree. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's oh, a... That, yeah, that, that's... Is, that is a very big tree. I'll give you, I'll give you that, Charlie. That's a big tree. <laughs> Having found the tree where the call was recorded less than 24 hours ago, the plan was to set up and wait for a short while in the vague hope that it was still in the area and loud enough for us to hear. But having expected to wait potentially into the night, I packed a couple of surprises. It's a box. What is it? It's in a box. It's just been crushed, but smell. Smell. <laughs> I can smell don't, it from don't. here. Oh, it smells good. It, it sounds smells good, right? Me, yeah. so, smell. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> You come the other the surprise. The other surprise. Is <laughs> the best joke. So I don't know. I don't know what you. Mean. The other surprise. Uh, we'll show you later. But you'll have to keep watching for that. Later. I have to wait. Yeah. I don't know if you can. Is this gonna? I'm just gonna take mine and then I'll pass you the box. Oh my god. Oh my god. Really? <laughs> but this is it in slow mo. Oh my god. So with our bellies full, we sat happy and listened into the night, but unfortunately heard nothing. Though with one opportunity missed, we were now in a position to begin the search for another audible curiosity, thanks to the second surprise I packed in my camera bag. So, no mystery bird, no photos and no footage, despite plenty of legwork and time invested. But that brings me to point number three. Oh my god, it's a bat detector. It is a bat detector. Don't ignore everything else in the search for just one thing. As we all know, wildlife is unpredictable and finding your target species first time rarely happens. Knowing that, I always try to keep an open mind about any sights, sounds or even smells that may lead to finding something that could be just as exciting. Having a memorable wildlife encounter, whether it results in a photo or not, means you're far less likely to come home disappointed and as a result much more likely to want to go back out. And the more time you spend out and about, the more you're likely to see, learn, and ultimately capture on camera. So it's as we've come out into a clearing, because the one thing I do know about bats is that they tend to hunt where the acoustics are best, because of course they locate stuff using echolocation, which is a series of clicks. And where the sounds are clearest is where they're most likely to get a much more positive lock on to potential prey and as a result, catch more. <laughs> That's sick. But as some of you may be wondering, what was that mystery bird in the end? Well, unfortunately, you'll just have to wait for part two and tip number four, in which I also have some news that I want to share with you all. Thank you for watching, and as always, a special thank you to my patrons for supporting these videos and helping to make them possible. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope to see you again next time.